What's up everybody, it's Sparrow with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Space Engineers. And we are back with our no-name ship at the moment. I still haven't quite gotten a name for the ship yet. I don't really want to do um, SWATBOT or whatever. Because uh, that was kind of just the design of the ship and not really the, the point. Or, I mean, not really the name I wanted to go with. But, so... I'm open to suggestions in terms of names. I've done a little bit of tweaking to the ship before we move forward. I've added maglocks to the ship for landing purposes. And I've also taken the advice of something uh, someone in the comments told me that I had no idea. Like it totally slipped my, slipped my mind entirely. Uh, let's go into spectator cam so I can fly into the ship real quick. I actually have to take care of a hull issue I just noticed too. Um, but I added this guy. And you might go, what is this? What is that block? I don't know what it is. That is the small ship grid. I, I gotta slow down here. That is the small ship grid version of the nanite build and repair system. I did not even think about using that uh, block. But this is the part that I missed over here. I don't know how this happened. But I somehow forgot to seal that up. Uh, which I don't really think matters in terms of airtight or anything like that. It just was annoying that you could see the the corner kind of thing through the through the ship. So I wanted to fix that and make sure the other side was the same. I think I did this side okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw a block in there. But I think for the most part all of this is sealed up. Looks like it. Yeah, I think we're good on that. Alright, cool. So I added the build and repair system to the ship. Now originally I was thinking, well that would be cool because it could, it could help repair the ship, right? I didn't even think about this, but if we go ahead and hop in here, and we go to our nanite repair system, uh, which I renamed, by the way. For those of you that don't know this already, this mod is actually... I don't think Nanite is anywhere in the actual title. It might be in the description somewhere. Um, but the actual title is like Build and Repair System or something like that. It's not the actual Nanite mod that was a big popular one for a long time. Still probably is. Where you had that like huge arc reactor looking thing and it was like a whole different... Um, a thing. That, that is an entirely different mod as far as I know. So, um, but if you scroll down here, um, I set my grind colors and ignore colors and all that good stuff, uh, grind order, but this, janitor grinds enemy blocks, janitor grinds not owned blocks, and neutral blocks. Obviously, I turned the neutral ones off because we don't need it. But what this does is, obviously, as the tooltip says, when checked blocks without owner in range will be grinded. Same thing up here. When checked, enemy blocks in range will be grinded. So what was what was being recommended to me through the comments, and I hadn't even thought about using it in this way, is if we um, were to fight and take over a ship or neutralize it, um, whatever the... Yeah, neutralize it, basically. is uh, It's no longer a threat, but it's floating through space. And we flew up with our maglocks and grabbed hold of it and then just floated. We could turn our own engines off if we didn't want to try and stop the thing from moving or whatever. And you could just sit there. And essentially what it would do is, without me having to get out of my ship, hack it, whatever, um, the ship itself would actually start... When I turn that on, it would actually start grinding down the other ship. And it would essentially... Um, give me, it would break the whole thing apart as if I were grinding it. And I was like, that's a great idea, because for stealing ship components and stuff, rather than me trying to if get into the main cockpit and hack the thing and grind it down and get back into it, fly it back and all that stuff like I used to do, you could basically just lock your ship onto the other vessel and let it just melt the thing. It would all go into your container. Now there is the question of could your ship actually hold all of the components? That's something entirely else that we'd have to test and play around with and I don't know the answer to. Um, one thing that I don't know... Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of... this guy was it? I was making backups, yeah. I, I try and make sure I have at least a backup floating around in case I do something I don't like. Um, so let's copy you. 
and we'll just kind of stick you out here. And some of you might have already noticed, I took the time, so I wouldn't have to later, and I started grouping things up. I renamed a few things. Some things like Battery 1, 2, 3 I didn't mess with. Um, I changed the cockpit name, the Gat... No, not the Gatling turrets. What was it? The Build and Repair Systems, now Nanite. Connectors, Main Connector, Main Merge Block... Um, stuff like that. I changed the antenna to no name for now until we come up with a name for it. Um, the beacon I changed to distress beacon because that's essentially what it'd be for. And so on and so forth. Um, and then I grouped up stuff like fixed weapons for which are our Gatling chain guns, turrets for Gatling, turrets for missiles, void thrusters, reactor backups. Basically grouped everything together and then added some stuff to the hot bar. So we have our we can turn on the void thrusters, we can turn on and off our reactors, we can turn on the batteries, and we can turn on the recharge. Why these aren't more clearly labeled, I don't know. It just says batteries and batteries, not recharge. Or it doesn't really tell you what it's doing, which is kind of annoying. Uh, missiles and Gatling turrets are just on and off. This is to select a fire. And then on two, we have our power and our switch lock controls for the uh, mag locks, and then we have the nanite repair system on off. So um, it just cleans it up a little bit more so we, it's a little more easier to use. But essentially the point that I'd like to get to for today is starting to work on the, um, the what did I call it? Atmospheric transfer ring, the ATR, I think. Um, that's what I'd kind of like to work on today. But what I don't know about is maybe whether or not I should remove one of these ramps right here and put a spotlight or maybe in the nose or something. Because um, it does seem like something, if uh, if you were seeing this as kind of like a mass-produced patrol fighter kind of thing, you might want a spotlight, especially where the chain guns are pointed, so you can kind of shine a light on something and, you know, pull over, don't move, you know, that kind of that kind of deal. Um, so before we get too far into stuff, let's go ahead and grab a spotlight. Oh, and you know what? With the atmospheric transfer ring set up, we should probably put... Will that fit there? That might do nice. That might do nicely. I don't know. Maybe further back. Uh, since we have a backup right there, let's go one block back. I like that better. I like that better. What do you guys think? I think that works really well, because then you can shine a spotlight, but you don't actually have to... Uh, it doesn't mess up the form factor of the ship there. It's just right there. I think that works, so we're going to keep it. Um, and let's go ahead and put toggle on and off. And I'm always amazed. There's there's a ton more options than I ever think to add to your hotbar or anything, so we're not going to mess with it. But I think that'll work. Um, and the one thing I would want to do is since I place things down and stuff, let's just go ahead and rename that to I don't know maybe maybe searchlight or something or let's just do main spotlight I don't I don't know it just seems like it's more professional to have a primary main something in there that'll work um so yeah I like that I think we're gonna keep a, a copy of that as well so let's go ahead and throw you out over here and now we'll get rid of you and it's a quick change. I mean, we could always do something else if we didn't like it or decided not to. But I think from a pilot standpoint, we're out here in space right now. But so it, there's not really a good frame of reference kind of thing. But I think it would be useful for um, when there's actually something flying around. Anyways, so yeah, I want to kind of work on the, the ATR a little bit. But what I'm wondering about... Obviously, we'll need... I think what I want to do is connect the merge block and the connector. Actually, I've never really dealt much with merge blocks. Let's test something real quick. I want to see if I can just place a new one like this. Like right into the, the, old, the current one right there. If I can get... There we go. Can I just snap you right in there? And essentially make a second grid out of that is kind of what I'm wondering. Um, but what I'd like to do, I don't know if I can use the mag locks to mount it or anything like that, or if I, if, even if I need to with the merge block there. Um, 
but I would essentially like it to kind of... It'll probably be a little bigger than I originally planned for it because um, I need to make sure it clears these guns and stuff. So we'll have to play around with that a little bit. But, and like I said, it's designed to be a transfer ring, so the weapons and stuff probably won't be too useful while it's in the midst of doing that. And I don't really know in terms of shape how we're going to set this up. But what I'd like to have is there's a connector here for the main ship. So what I'd like to do is have a connector that attaches to the ring, but then one on the other side of the ring so that when you land, um, it'll actually be able to dock to the ship. And then you can pass stuff, or not the ship, the, the capital ship or the base. And then essentially you could pass stuff from the base to the ring and through the ring into the small ship type of thing is what I'm thinking. Though, um, I think it would look cool for it to be just a ring around the back here, but I don't know if we actually have to keep it all the way on the back or if we could have it be a little more of a tube kind of thing. I don't think that would look as cool as a ring, but we're going to play around with it. So I'm going to do some off-camera work real quick and see what I can come up with. Alrighty, so here's what I have so far laid out as sort of a prototype or a wireframe, if you will. So, essentially my thought process here, what's going on, is I wanted to have... I don't know if I need this or not. Um, I put it... well, actually it'll probably need to be bigger than this, to be honest, because I'll need hydrogen tanks somewhere. And I didn't even think about that, but they're fairly large. Actually, let's do a quick test here. They are actually, it looks like five by five. So five long. And I'm thinking it's five by five by five. Five wide by five. Yeah, five by five by five. So currently this is five by five exactly. So I might need to go out a little bit further. This inner line here is pretty much the minimum to not affect the uh, weapon collision boxes here. So this inner ring is kind of coming right off the merge block, giving it one block to work with. Um, and then coming around here clears the weapons. And then this one, this outer ring, was coming off of this. So while it does look a little large right now, I think once I start throwing like hydrogen tanks and stuff in here, it might actually need to be a little wider if I want them concealed. I don't know that I do just yet. Um, but one thing I thought of was this would look a little weird, right? Like, um, like if we just put a block... Oop, that's not what I meant to do. If we just put like a, a block in front of here and then it was just that wide... That's it. It just goes around like that. And then you park it, and it's sitting this high off the ground. It would look a little weird. Let's just be real. So, my thought process is that maybe, just maybe, I might do a little bit of a taper type thing and bring it out and then back. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, maybe have a line out to say something like there or maybe a little further, um, and then have a couple ramps leading back down in a little taper, almost like this shape, maybe even modeling the bottom shape kind of thing, um, to kind of keep the theme the same, but also give it a little bit more of a uh, tapered edge. I might even try and line it up with that front part. I don't know. Uh, then, of course, you get into are you building basically the same hull shape all the way around? It would just be fatter. I don't know that I want to go that far. So I was thinking of something smaller for the bottom. Um, but I do like the whole ring idea rather than it being like a shell type of thing. Um, so yeah, let me play around with this a little bit more. I'm probably not going to be finished with this this episode because frankly it would probably be in my best interest to get some feedback from you guys as far as what you think and ideas and spitball it. Um, so this will probably be more drafting and kind of coming up with the concept frame design. But let me uh, do some more tinkering and I'll see what I can come up with. All 
Alrighty, so as you can see, I've been testing this a little bit. Um, so I've got a couple of different designs that I went with. Um, I'm still playing around with it. This was kind of the first one. The only problem I have with this is this isn't much of a ring. It more follows the contour of the ship, which isn't necessarily bad. And we could fix this with the outer edge being more of a ring and it might kind of come out in the wash. I'm not really sure. Uh, then the next stage was this one over here where I tried to make it a bit more circular. However, I realized that because the actual ship isn't very circular, the top part fits, the bottom looked a little weird. And when I tried to move it down more centralized, I realized these guns would run into the collision. Now, grant you, I could just move it wider, but I didn't really want to make it any bigger. Um, and this one which was a further test of that when I moved it one block down which was all I could do to fit that there that looked a little bit better uh, but it still left a big gap down here and then I got to this stage now this is kind of a two-stage system where um, I did the outer ring kind of just at its own pace essentially uh, I think I don't, I'm kind of noticing now, I'm not sure if this actually lines up. So this is the last of the slope blocks on the outer. Okay, it does line up. Phew, good. So this one's, a, I call this the two-stage one because this is the inner ring right here. And you can see I added a little bit of a edge. So it wasn't just straight across, but it also wasn't like that one over there where it just went all the way over. Um... Now, if I want to keep the same amount of space between that one and this one, I would stop right here and bring this across. However, since this is going to have more meat in it with the connectors, merge blocks, etc., um, this would actually be the real line if I wasn't worried about space between the inner and outer ring and I just wanted to make the outer ring the same size universally. I think think I'm kind of leaning towards the latter. I don't think I want this to just square off at the edge. I think this outer ring would look best with it look, uh, running all the way around. In fact, now that I look at it, we might have enough room to plunk our hydrogen tanks right in here, maybe two of them. Right, like that-ish. Actually, tell you what, let's add one more anchor point block there and that should let us mount it where I was looking. Right about there, I think. Let's see what that looks like. So we would be within the um, the center column, so we could add a connector running up to that conveyor or whatever. Um, and it would fit within the inner and outer ring. So this would actually keep the hydrogen tanks concealed and we could pull that off. Um, now, I think think what I'm gonna end up doing is where are my I don't know if they're actually gonna stay right there or tell you what let's see if we can actually move them over there would that still work it would still work and we actually have a block lower we could go so let's try one down I was thinking that would be that would be right on the edge okay so we have an extra space there that's not exactly what I was hoping for. I was hoping it would be more even. Um, I'm kind of thinking up closer to the top is a better idea. Mainly just because if you were to hit the ground or something, there won't, it, it wouldn't be as, um, I'm going to use a word, damageable. I think that's a word. Pretty sure that's a word. Um, don't know. So there is that. And I think that will work for the most part. Um, I might end... Well, I don't know. That would actually cover it up. I was going to say I might bring this out one more block. Uh, but I think I can just start right from here and do like that. And we could actually run this like so. And maybe do something to this effect. I don't know where that'll go from there, but it's not a bad idea at the moment. So far, I'm liking it. As to whether I keep liking it, no clue. Um, but it does work for now. Now, 
some of you may be wondering about could we move this up a block and start them there we could i just don't know like basically this is working right now because i only have blocks on one merge block and one connector side i don't know what would happen if i tried to merge them with both of them uh, inset into hull blocks um, if you have experience with that let me know and if it would work then we might end up moving this up one and move this and this would come out a little bit sooner i guess because it would be one block further out maybe our other option is we could utilize ramps or other things to make some of these a little less jagged um if that's a if that's a doable thing i don't think it will be for the inner and outer rings but it might be for over here so that pretty much takes care of where we would put our hydrogen tanks at least for here because the thing is unless i bring this outer ring out one more block or maybe even two um let's put that there so i can't cover the rings i mean not the rings the uh well actually we don't necessarily have to i guess hold up let me try this let me put a Let's just put a cross beam through there real quick for mounting the hydrogen tanks. And I guess I could do something like this and then do another outer ring much like this one on this edge and make it go that way. And with that, I mean, in theory, you could just do hydrogen tanks everywhere, but it would be a little redundant. Um, is that too far or no this isn't far enough i think yeah so that's kind of what i was meaning and i don't know if i'd have room for another one nope no room for another one but we could put thrusters or whatever um speaking of let's do large thrusters and if we did that what are our hookups like okay i don't like this that i have uh empty block space in between Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. I don't like that. I don't like that, actually. So, I don't know if that would work or not. But you can kind of start to see the effect I was going for. This is kind of the idea overall. Um, we could even do something to where... If we wanted to, I don't know that we want to do this or not. We, I might want these all encased. And if it's encased, then this whole side arc thing wouldn't really even work at all. Um, but what I'm wondering about is we could attach a large one to the front of a tank and the back of a tank for the forward and reverse thrusters. But, again, it requires it to be kind of somewhat exposed. Or at least the, the tank has to be kind of exposed. And I'm not sure I want to do that. I would rather have, like, the hydrogen tanks concealed somewhere in the ring. I don't know what just happened. My character just flew away. I really genuinely don't know what just happened. I thought the ship was flying away for a second. Um, and then I'd like to have the thrusters, like, I don't know, like this or something, and then have connection points hooked up to those. That's kind of what I was thinking. Um, like that on the front and the back down here. Can I put ones down here with those tanks there? No, I would have to move the tanks over slightly, which wouldn't really be a problem. There's plenty of room over here. Uh, we could keep them this height and then just move them over. And essentially what I'm wondering about is with these ports... Well, it wouldn't really matter. It wouldn't matter. I could find some way to use the small connectors and hook them up to them. Uh, let me know in the comments, though, if you can use large thrusters with these small connection points. If so, that's what I'm going to make use of because they'll be the easiest to kind of finagle with. Um... But let's see, I don't think I like that. So if I do one lower and I do one lower here. Wait, that's too far. Like that and like that. That puts what, like a three block space? That's more symmetrical, I think. I can live with that. 
Um, now up here, we could actually put like this, I think. Well, no, we'd still want to do it. Okay, we'd still want to do it this way. Hold on. Um, let me get a crossbar going there. And then... What did I have? Right about there, I think. And that leaves a little bit more space here, actually. And I think that's what I meant to do down here. Well, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, because the idea with this was to actually have them inset into the hull, not exposed. Um, this, <clears throat> excuse me, this setup is more having the tanks exposed and you would just see them along the outer edge of the ring. The original idea was to have them built in to where you couldn't see them and it was just part of a ring. However, if I were to do that, it would probably mean I'd have to stack them like this and put them just down here, like maybe one or two side by side, maybe, and up a little higher. Um, actually, let me just grab a copy of this and I'll show you what I'm talking about in case it wasn't really clear. Okay, so instead of this kind of view, the more concealed version would be something like this, and I guess I don't actually have room to do others, but then doing like, I don't know, this. And this is all contingent on needing that much hydrogen. Again, I have not worked in survival with hydrogen thrusters, much like the weapons, so I don't know how much hydrogen I actually need to do, um, get out and get back into the atmosphere burns. But you could keep kind of doing like this and then have like a slope type thing like we talked about before and that would then you would just remove these and you would have like thrusters so you'd have your fuel tanks on the bottom and then you'd have thrusters along there so those are kind of the two predominant ideas let me know what you guys think about which you think would be best because I'm not really sure and again I don't know how much hydrogen I'd actually need um, I have a tendency to go overboard with reactors, batteries, hydrogen, etc. because I've never really tried to make a go of survival stuff, so like I don't know how much hydrogen would, re would be required to, to burn up through the atmosphere. And in case it helps, I am planning on when this ship is docked to the ring, the ring will provide full propulsion, so turning off the void thrusters to avoid draining the batteries is the idea. Um, obviously with the void thr thrusters I can probably do it without this uh, ATR at all. So yeah, that's kind of the... Um, so kind of defeat the purpose I suppose. But I kind of like this idea... how many do I have there? That would be two, four, six, eight, and this would be six. So if I wanted the equivalent of having them in the ring it would look like that. And that would have them concealed within the ring. Okay, so I've been a little bit busy. Um, so I kind of went a little crazy and started doing a bunch of different tests. I didn't really like how this one was flowing for me though, uh, because it made the whole thing feel a bit too... Um, too shell-like and not enough of a ring. So I'm kind of operating on this assumption that we're going to keep these exposed a little bit um, and kind of frame in and around it. And I'm kind of going to grab this one real quick because I think this is going to end up being my primary prototype for now. Um, this has also told me just how many ships I can paste in before my computer starts freaking out. So thankfully I haven't actually found out how many that is yet. So basically, it would look something like this. We're going to go ahead and seal this up as much as we can. Um, and then I'll explain kind of what I'm thinking from there. Now we could actually go out a block, I guess, and make the... Well, we actually couldn't because of that guy, right? Oh, no, we actually could go... No. Nope, we couldn't bring it out one more because that would be right into the collision box. So, uh, that's what I meant by kind of keeping this a little bit exposed. And I didn't really initially want to do that. 
Uh, but it would look something like this where you're not re well and we could probably even fill in in there with the spectator camera if we really want to. Um, or maybe if I can get my cursor to lock on. No, it's not going to work. Uh, but anyways, that's kind of the general idea. Now, um, there is some problems with this design, I'm not going to lie. The, the first one I did with thrusters uh, was this setup, but it had no downward thrust. Now, I know some people think, well, for an atmospheric transfer, you really don't need downward, and it's more important to have lateral and vertical um, on the bottom, I did do four, uh, four bottom thrusters to go upward to fight gravity. I don't know if that's enough, but, eh, you know, I kind of figured it'd be enough, but I don't really know. There is one other option, and that's we could actually bring this out by one kind of thing. And if we brought it out by one, I would be able to put... Um, lateral thrusters out here like this and then we could cover that up or at least I could put one lateral thruster I guess that's not really a whole lot but I could put one or maybe two if I had them out here on the edge I don't really like that idea though so I kind of like the way it's going and this is the new design that I did the newest uh, where we have one lateral for each side, one downward, or no, two downward. I guess it would be two downward. Um, and then there's four vertical, and there's eight forward and backward. Now, I don't know that it really needs that many. I frankly just had enough ports on the by connecting the hydrogen thrusters. I don't know that it actually needs that many, though. Um... So that was my kind of my point, was we could cut some of those out and maybe use these connectors and run them to something else. I don't really know. Um, it just seemed to make sense, but like, I don't know, maybe use the side ones and then take the, the vertical ones off. I mean, the, the top and the bottom forward and backward thrusters, maybe remove those and just cover them. Um, so it's not necessarily that it's necessary. It was just I had open container plugs from the... Uh, tanks, so I just uh, decided to use them. I also ran the connector through here. Let's see if I can get in here without the spectator camera. I don't think I can. Let's just do it this way. So, lights. There we are. So what I ended up doing, if I can find the connector here, there you are, is I put two of the frames in here and then just ran uh, junctions that have little ports and kind of wrote changed up the rotation so we had different port configurations to use. Thought that would be kind of useful. Um, and then connected everything up through the tank connection ports and then threw in some thrusters along the way that could be concealed. Because at this point if I were to um, cover like this, everything should be covered. Sort of, sort of deal. Now we can't do in here but we can cover it as best we can. And we can also do that down here in the reverse order. So there is still a little bit of room, and I could actually use smaller thrusters. I honestly just thought of that. Um, I've been using large ones, but I could actually switch to small hydrogens, and we could pack this thing full of small hydrogen thrusters. There's plenty of room for that kind of stuff. Um, but for something this big, I just didn't know if it would actually matter. Um, so for kicks and giggles, before we wrap this up, let's turn off our void thrusters. So we're running purely on hydrogen thrusters. And let's see how we do. Now this is out in space. We're not fighting gravity. But acceleration-wise, totally fine. Acceleration, deceleration is totally fine. Um, verticals, fast. So this is all space base, but... Overall, the speed speedometer thing is not doing too bad, other than lateral. Lateral's not that great, but that's to be expected. Um, so yeah, overall it's moving really well, and there's a ton of tanks, so we should be able to... I think, again, not real too crazy familiar uh, with the, the whole thing, as far as hydrogen goes. So, I don't know. 
But yeah, so that's kind of how I have it set up at this point with my little fleet over here. Um, I've got a little fleet going on. So yeah, I think that's about going to wrap it up for today because we've got most of the function down for, um, for our ATR. I don't have the form part. We haven't really beautified it and covered it up or anything like that. I might do some of that off camera. Um, and I think we had the block damage turned off, so this shouldn't be a problem, in theory. But let me know what you guys think in the comments and stuff about... Oh, you know what? I wonder... No, I don't think we need a jump drive. I was going to say we could actually turn this into a Star Wars hyperdrive ring. Um, but I don't think we really need it. Because then I'd have to put batteries and that's... It was predominantly an atmospheric transfer ring. It wasn't supposed to be... Now, what we could do in the future with a capital vessel or something is have different interchangeable mounts. Um, I also put a maglock down here, in case I hadn't mentioned that one. So that would be... You would use the connector and the maglock to dock to whatever. And I guess it would kind of stick out and float like this, but I think that's okay. Um, so, yeah... But what we could do is have interchangeable ones, like maybe a ring that you would you would take this one off, detach it, det attach to another one that had no hydrogen thrusters, but it was just packed full of batteries and like jump drives, maybe like fill up in here with jump drives and then fill all this with batteries or something. And then we could actually have a hyperspace ring. Um, I think that would be really cool, too. So let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments. In the meantime, I think we're going to wrap things up here. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.